Now the whole point of doing that is because in DB2 we need to get the right schema in place for these inserts to work properly. And so let's try it. Let's just do that. Let's go into columns. We're going to select all of these columns. I'm going to right click on these and delete them because they make no sense in the case of our CFACT.party table definition. So let's do that. We're going to click on load and we're going to go to database and now you can literally just type this in. So that's what I'm going to do. CFACT.party and that'll immediately navigate you to the right spot. You can press click OK or just press enter and then take a look at this. All of those table, all of the metadata about all those columns has been imported and just think about all of the time that has saved you. They, it knows if it's nullable or not nullable, if it's an integer or not an integer and you know doing this by hand would be very time consuming, frustrating, error prone. You don't have to do any of it. It's all here. Now uh, the next step here is that we cannot, we do not want to do or explicitly mention the party ID because if we do that then as we had seen before it w the number will not be auto generated, it won't be auto incremented. So we need to leave it blank. By leaving this blank, the default will be applied from DB2, which is to increment to the next number. So that's exactly what we want to do. I'm going to click yes. Now, all of these other values we are going to essentially get rid of. We don't need them. The only one we do need is timestamp. And if you ever have a question about, okay, well, which ones do I need and which ones do I not need, uh, well, the easiest way to look at it is look at the nullable. Right? We need to have some value there. And then also look at the generated tab, a generated property in, in something like the is stage, um, sorry, in, in uh, the data studio, so that you can tell which columns you can omit and not omit. If it says generated, you can omit that, and usually you want to admit, omit that. So really, we, we don't need is individual. We can get rid of that as well. And click OK. Uh, now, at this point, we just have the registered number, which is our employee ID. And then we have a timestamp, which uh, actually, we believe it or not, we are going to also not use because this is also has a generated value. And so we can leave it blank as well. And you can't, unfortunately, you can't see that through here. You can't see that the timestamp is generated. Uh, there is a way to do it through the command prompt, but I think it's better to do as we'd seen earlier uh, in the uh, Data Studio client. So I'm going to click on OK. This is very, very simplified now. And I'm going to just click OK. And let's run this. And before I do that, just imagine what you think what you might get here. No errors, so that's interesting. And now we're going to click on Run. And sure enough, we have five rows. Now, you might be wondering, well, what did that do exactly? I mean, OK, well, we're going to look at it. But first, take a look at what we, we had told it to do. Go to Properties, go to Usage, look at our write mode. It says Insert. I told it to generate the SQL, which means you, which means data stage, you create the SQL. I'm not going to write it. We know this is an insert, and the table name is to go to cffact.party. So all these things we've been talking about. Um, we're, later we'll go into more about what is generate SQL and what is, you know, how does it work. But essentially, if, it, if you say yes, data stage will do the insert itself. And we know it's an insert because look at the options we have. Well, we selected insert. That was the default. Otherwise, we could have done an insert new rows only, an update, a delete, insert, then delete, then update, update, then insert, or the famous Upsert or merge, we'll be talking about more uh, a little bit more later, and we talked about earlier too. Delete, then insert, bulk load, or user defined SQL. So, this is actually really nice. We just selected insert and told data stage generate the SQL. Yeah, you go for it. And click on OK, and then take a look now. We go back and we say, OK, I want you to show me. Remember, we had zero records before. I want you to show me everything in CF Fact Party. If we do exactly that same command now, take a look, we have five records indeed. And look at the party ID. So the party ID has incremented. Mine started out with one, and then I did some imports before, and I actually did uh, 4,021 because the next available number is 4,022. So the party ID, which we did not include, was defaulted to the next value. And sure enough, 
here we go, we get four, it's not sorted, but still, 4021 4, actually was the first value, 4022, 4023, 4024, 4025. And then take a look, we have the registered number, which is incorrect, as set as Linda, comma, Johnson, comma, two, and John, comma, Smith, comma, one. And that's because we need to do some additional adjustments to get that to work properly. But, sure enough, uh, we have indeed done an insert into the database, which is a remote DB2 database, all without writing any SQL, and we are well on our way to getting the rest of this, getting this to work right, uh, coming, which we'll do soon in the transform stage. But before we wrap up this video, I just wanted to show you the command prompt that I had mentioned before. So we had said that there is a way in the command prompt to look at the identity and generated values from that you normally would look at in Data Studio. But if you don't have Data Studio invol involved, which I imagine you may not, this is how you provide it, how you find it. DB2 select call name, identity, and generated from syscat.columns where tab name or tab name is equal to party, because that's what we want to look at hit enter and you will see not surprisingly we have two different columns here that have identity and more interestingly in some ways generated set and remember what this means we had seen this from before in an earlier video that if you have identity columns identity column is a numeric column in a table that automatically generates a unique numeric value in a sequence for each row inserted so one two three four five six seven eight nine it will just continually increase and you have two values, you can have it set for A like we saw, generated always, or generated by default. So take a look, that's exactly what we're seeing here. Generated is D for default in the case of party ID. So if you don't provide a party ID, the system will provide one for you and it will automatically increment it because that's its identity. Whereas in the case of timestamp, we also have a generated value set. In this case, it's set for A, which means it's always going to generate a value for you. You cannot provide one, and there is no identity value. This is a not, not being um, uh, automatically incremented. So, in other words, a timestamp will automatically be generated for you, and you cannot control it. So, that is a quick, easy way to find out what these values are through the command prompt. And then lastly, I just want to drive home this point that if you have anything listed in the generated column, so a D or an A, in Designer, do not mention these. Do, you need to leave them blank. And that's exactly what we've done here. We have left actually everything blank in this case, and we've only left the registered number. But you really need to leave these blank if you want generated to work properly. Otherwise, you should expect to get error messages. You can't provide it here, and, and actually you could technically um, provide one here, but you probably shouldn't. So uh, if you see generated as having some value, do not mention them at all in the, in the designer. And when we did mention uh, registered number there, the point here is notice how registered number and any field really that you're going to explicitly mention will have z nothing listed under generated.